Hey up troops, hey Littleton here again with another video, and this- And this time, we're talking about Lion. Now, with all the other operators that I feel like I've made a video on, I feel like a broken record where I've gone, they're super strong, they're so good, Aeon is amazing, Ace is amazing, Maverick's amazing. Lion is good, but he's situational, and it's key that you communicate with him as well. Now, all I ask, and I am, I am genuinely begging here. I'm on my knees and I'm begging to you. Please don't use your lion scan within the first 20 seconds of a round. It gives you nothing. Unless there's something I'm not aware of. You see it all the time and it makes no sense to me. You get three of them. Take care of them and use them wisely. In my opinion, the best way to use a lion scan is when you know the defender has to move. And therefore, you'll get the most out of the scan and get the most intel. If there's a Roma and you've droned him out and you're pushing him from a certain angle, you know he's got to run the other direction. You're going to see where he goes. Post-plant situation, the defender has to get to the diffuser. Use your lion scan, you're going to see where they are because they have to move towards you or they're going to lose the round. It's best used when the defender has to move. Now, in this video, what is difficult with lion is it's not easy to go through and show you how to use the lion scan because it's completely situational. So what I've done is I went into a few quick matches, I played Lion, and I've got a few clips from a few games where I tried to show you how I think Lion is best used. That's enough of me waffling on. Let's get stuck into it. Alright then, so just for a change, we'll get started with Lion's loadout. And let's have a quick look at it then. So he's got three primaries. The V308, which is a sort of LMG type AR. A 417, which is the DMR. And also the SGCQB shotgun. Now... You know my thoughts on shotguns on Siege. I'm not a massive fan of them. They don't work for me. I'm rubbish at using them, so I don't use that. Now, uh, Mr. Goose Chanker, a.k.a. Grandmaster Jake, a.k.a. Grandmaster Afro, swears by the Lion DMR. I'm not a massive fan of DMRs. I like the idea of if I miss my first shot, I can just spray an entire mag in the direction and hope for the best. But the 417 is a really solid DMR. If you're good with DMRs and you hit your first shot, go for it. I highly recommend using the muzzle brake and laser on it, though, um, because the hip fire on this DMR is insane, especially with a laser. It's like almost as accurate as ADS, and it's crazy. Uh, the V308, though, is an underrated gun in Siege, in my opinion. It's really, really solid stat-wise. 44 damage, 700 fire rate. I always use Sledge's gun as an example of, of comparison. So 44 and 700. If we go and have a look at the Sledge which everyone rates his gun, 47 damage with less fire rate. So slightly more damage, slightly less fire rate. It's a really, really, really solid gun for Lion. And um, yeah, the V308 is, in my opinion, the best of his primaries. Secondary-wise, you've got the Revolver or the GON-6. I should, or, Especially if you're taking the V308 with 50 rounds in your mag, I don't think you're going to need to change to a secondary. You know, with 50 bullets, you're going to make a, um, a bit of a mark. The GON-6 just gives you the ability to destroy anything that's in your way. Maestro camera, Malusi Banshee, Castle Barricade, whatever it might be. And on the flip side, we've then got Flashes and Claymores. Now, in the next patch, apparently, on the test server at the minute, there's going to be two Claymores that, that comes with having with taking the Claymore these days. If that comes in, then taking the Claymore could be an option. I always personally like taking flashes, especially with Lion, because you can flash an area, use his gadgets, and push in, and the enemy's blind and can't move. So I think your flashes teamed with uh, uh, Lion's main utility, the E1D, works really, really well. So for me, yeah, V308, gone six, flashes. So what does Lion's gadget do then? Let's start with the basics. Lion has the EE1D, which is a wrist-mounted sort of motion sensor type thing. When you press your utility button, the EE1D will activate, and it's about three seconds worth of time that the defenders can't move or they'll be highlighted on the map. So I'll show you what it looks like to activate. Press, and press it once. I guess activated. One, two, three three seconds worth you also whilst lion's in the game you get this drone this is lion's drone that isn't there if lion isn't playing in the game which i never realized for a good while whilst playing siege <laughs> that's only in the round if lion's playing and that's where the sensor comes from so what does the sensor look like when somebody moves in it well we've very kindly got a vigil waiting inside the garage here without his gadget but we'll come on to that later on as to why that's important so when vigil moves within the ee1d sensor when it's active visual will be highlighted on the map to lion so we'll do it through the wall first so you can see it's not just line of sight so we activate we activate the ee1d Vigil's going to move inside as you can see there it highlights where he is he's seven meters nine meters away and it'll be up there for the duration of the scan and then a little bit after but that then isn't a live ping anymore You'll see that the Vigil, I haven't moved him, but if I move Vigil, you see how that wasn't exactly live there anymore. It lasts for a while after the scan, but the last live ping, I'll show you one more time. 
so we can actually see it this time. So Vigil's going to be moving around. He gets live pinged as he's going. And then when the scan stops, the last ping, the third ping, will be exactly where he was at that time. But now he's moving. That still remains there. So that's not active information after the scan's over, after the third tick. So you'll have to, you know, don't come swinging in here going, well, he's definitely here because that's where it is when Vigil's on the right-hand side. So just bear that in mind after the third tick. Now, just one thing to bear in mind in terms of the movement once the EE1D is scanning, you can crouch, spin, and prone. As long as you don't move using WAS or D, you're not going to come up on that scanner. So I'll give you an example now. We'll use the scanner. Vigil's going to spin around. He's not picked up. Crouching, he's not picked up. By spinning or crouching, we'll try it one more time once the cooldown goes away in, uh, in about five seconds' time. But you can prone and spin around as well during the time that the scanner's going. So send the scanner again. Vigil's going to crouch. Prone. No issues there. The only thing you can't do is move side to side or forwards and backwards when that EE1D is scanning. Now, there's a reason we've got Mr. Vigil here involved with the demonstrations, because Vigil is the only direct counter to Lion's EE1D. Favera comes up in the scan even if she's using a silent step. Vigil doesn't come up in the scan if he's using his sort of jamming utility or... I don't actually know what Vigil's utility is called, if I'm brutally honest with you. Um, that's a, something I need to find out for the time we do Vigil. But yeah, whilst Vigil's using his utility, he doesn't come up on Lion's EE1D scan, and I'll demonstrate that now. So Vigil's utility is on, and here he is, running around, not getting scanned, whilst Lion scans going. So you've got to really be careful... Because if there is a vigil on the uh, on the board and you you know you've scanned in a certain area, you're fairly confident no one's in there, um, or at least nobody's moving in there, should I say? Bear in mind the vigil could be moving and you wouldn't know about it. So just be careful about the vigil. That's the most direct counter. So whilst vigil is the only operator that completely counters lion, mute's utility also counters lion scans as well. And this goes for anyone who's stood in the range of a mute jammer, not just mute himself. Now you'll see a mute jammer range. As you walk out, you see the jammer um, icon bottom left next to the health. As soon as you walk out of the range, that disappears. As soon as you come back in the range, that does appear. I don't actually know the exact figure of what that is. I don't know why I've pinged the floor here. I need to ping the jammer. It's two meters is the range of the um, of the mute jammer. I don't know why I just pinged the floor there. I don't know why I did that. What a clown. So anyway, the point is, once you're in the mute jammer's range, you can move around and it will block the lion scan. I'll show you now. In comes the scan. We're moving around in the jammer's range, and it doesn't get picked up by Lion. You don't get highlighted. As soon as you move out of the range of the jammer, two meters away, remember, you will then get picked up by the scanner if you're moving. But as long as you're a bit like Dockerby's phone, as long as you're within range of the mute jammer here, you're not going to get picked up by the scanner. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as you move out of the range. So not picked up. And as soon as you're out of the range there, like when we got to sort of this area, you got picked up by the scanner. So that works for not just mute. That's for everyone stood in the range of a mute jammer. Now, this is an open question to everybody who's watching this video. And if you play Lion and you do this at the start of the round, please tell me why. We've just spawned in. Prep phase is over. All right, let's get to the building. Please don't be the Lion player that scans within the first 10 seconds of a round. If you genuinely know a reason as to why people do that when they play Lion, please let me know. The only reason I can think about is because when the enemies get highlighted, they'll appear at the top of the match heading bar, and it'll show you what enemies or what operators, sorry, are on the board on the other team. That's the only reason I can think about. If you can think of another reason as to why people do that, one of my biggest tips with Lion is you only get three of these scans. You've got to use them at the right time, which we'll come on to shortly. You've got to use them at the right time. Bang you on out at the middle of the round with 10 seconds gone whilst you're walking towards the building achieves, in my opinion, nothing. As I say, if you know the reason why people do it, please let me know. But please don't be that person. <laughs> okay, so the question is, where is Lion useful and when should I use my scans? The answer to that question is anytime you're going to push an enemy and they're going to need to move. Now, that could be a post-plant situation because the enemy needs to move to defuse the bomb, obviously. So you're stopping them moving by scanning. Or the main one, in my opinion, is when you're pushing an area where you know there's a defender. We can see Castle here with one hand on his gun. Look at that, holding his hand up. Stop. Okay, Castle, thanks, mate. Um, if you're pushing an enemy and you know they're going to need to move or reposition as you're pushing... That's when to use the scan. On a side note, by the way, I've got a drone under this cabinet here, which you can, uh, I'll show you from this. This is completely unrelated to Lion. Just for a change, I'm going off on a tangent. If you can get a drone through uh, construction into cash and under this cabinet where this one is here, nobody ever checks under this cabinet for drones. It gives you so much information on the entirety of cash. 
you can spin 360. And even if you do look under there, it still looks like part of the cabinet wheels. Like, it's hard to see. But anyway, that's just a random tip. So, we know we're going to need to push into, uh, into cash from construction to get rid of this castle. So the way to do that, in my opinion, and the best way to use Lion is get the information first. If you've got the drone, you know the information that he's on the one ping there. Or if you've quick peeked him or you've info peeked him or whatever it is you've done to get the information that you know where an operator or an enemy is. You start the scan, you ADS where you know he is, and you push. And therefore, if he's gonna if he's gonna move, the scan is gonna show you he's moved. If he hasn't moved, you already know where he is. So you've got the information about where the castle is that he's behind the bomb here on one. You can see that's on one, you look around, there he is. So you use your scanner and you push in. And as you're pushing in, if he is going to move, you're going to be alerted that the fact that via the scanner that the enemies move locations. Obviously, he might crouch, and as you scan and start pushing, he moves around this side of the bomb. You're going to be alerted to that via the scanner. The, another thing that you can do, I haven't got any more scans left for this example, but another thing that you can do with Lion, which is why I recommend taking the flashes, is to flash around the corner. Oh, oh that's not gone to plan. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to leave that in just to show you that mistakes do happen. <laughs> You're going to flash around the corner. And as you flash, you then you do your scanner and then you push. So he's blind and he can't move. Hi, Castle. Thanks for waving. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. The flash there. That didn't quite go to plan. Okay, so in the po... Oh, sorry. I just forgot. Let's shoot the radio. So in the post-plant situation, Lion is also really useful. And the reason for that is because the defenders have a certain amount of time, depending on what how long the plant's been down for, before they can defuse or they lose the round. Because of that, they have to move, and they have to move and push the area towards the diffuser. So if we just plant here... Bear with me a second, let me just put the codes in. Password secret 123. Job done. Uh, and we go back to here to hold the diffuser, or whatever it is we're playing. The frost then has to move towards the diffuser, okay? So the frost is moving from cash, you saw it before. If I stick a drone out, you'll see. We are on a time limit here. The frost is here in cash. She has to move to the bomb to defuse. So as she's trying to move to the bomb to defuse, you just start lion scanning. You know she's trying to get to where you're trying to get to, and then she's appeared on the scan. You know she has to move, otherwise she loses the round. And that's why lion is really clutch in places where, in situations, sorry, where you know the enemy has to move. Poor frost there. Never had a chance of defusing that because we always know where she's going to be. Oh, she's on the diffuser. So, in situations where enemies have to move, Lion is really useful. So, you'll notice we're on the defensive side of things now when we're playing top red stairs. Matey Lion here is at the bottom of red stairs. Now, what I'm going to show you here that you need to be aware of isn't a completely usable strat in every scenario. And like most things, most, most things? Like most things are poppycocked. Like most things in Siege, it's subjective and situational. So, Lion's gadget is actually quite loud from the defender side of things as well. It's almost the same sound that Lion and the attackers hear. So, that sound can mask footsteps in certain areas of maps. So, if we just listen to what it sounds like from a defender's perspective... It sounds almost exactly the same, or maybe even exactly the same as what the attackers hear. However, that sound can mask pushes up certain areas of maps. I don't think you should rely on it, but if you need to get out of a squeeze, you can do that. So, we know Lion's bottom red stairs. If we use his scan again, and then we'll see what happens if we, we try and listen to him coming up the stairs, and let's see what happens. So, there goes the scan. So, you, the, the, the sound isn't sort of completely, uh, completely gone. But, however, if I uncrouch on my keyboard on the other side here, your boy Lion's at the top of the stairs, I and mean, we barely even heard it. Bear in mind that in this situation, there's going to be people on the breach, there's going to be people on CC window, fighting for rafters, fighting for, uh, for cash door from Con over there. So, it's not the only piece of sound that we're going to hear. You know, there's going to be a lot of other things going on, and the sound of that scan can mask out quite a few other things. So, again, I don't think it's a completely viable strat every time, but it's just something you probably need to be aware of. Cheers, Lion. So this is something we've not done before, in terms of me talking over a clip that I recorded earlier, but that's what we're going to do. Uh, there is a bit of dead space at the beginning of this video. Um, you can hear the SMG-11 that's over in cash. Um, I know that there's fears in a fight with that. It's a 2v4. I can't really push through into waiting because I know that the SMG-11 is behind me. After a few little exchanges between the Zephyr and whoever it is, I don't know at this moment with the SMG-11, I don't know if it's like a smoke or a Legion bolts through for some bizarre reason and gets smoked. I know this guy's then going to peek me. Thanks very much. I knew that was going to happen. 
And at this point now, it's a 2v2, so it's actually winnable. So I'm starting to think now, how can we use drones and lion scans and utility to actually get onto the site? Um, we don't have the diffuser, which is a bit of a problem. I lose my drone there, which is a bit stupid of me, but there you go. Um, so yeah, 2v2, I'm going to push through the door. So we scan there so we can get the uh, get through there a bit more safely. Keep the common angle over the bomb, please fire it, nothing there. Peeks the bomb again, GM. Now we're in a 1v1, sorry, a 2v1. So we've gone from a 2v4 to a 2v1. Um, we, I know that the other person's over on um, on bunk side there. And I try and peek the door and I get smoked, but it nearly worked. We're onto a theme park example now. And this one is, a, it, Lion is really good when you've got more players up than the other team. So we're a 5v2, so it makes it a bit easier to be brutal. I'm sense. about to push into showers. I don't want to be swung from, uh, from storage there, so... Um, we get the ping. You can see that there. I probably should have killed that player there. That's my bad, really. Um, so we know they're in that area. The map line for the job there. The utilities work. We're going to push around a little bit further to try and get the kill. Keep them going outside the door. 2v1. Lion again. Really strong operator in this circumstance. I hear at this point that I'm playing with a Monty. I didn't really recognise. I thought someone was going to peek over that gap there, but get the scan off. They're in the fight with the Monty, so we know where they are. You get pinged. Get a bit of a wider angle. And that's exactly where Lion's strong. We had the ascendancy. Onto a canal example. And um, and this one's fairly straightforward, really. The only thing is, I, I realised that I have 100% in-game voice volume when this guy on the team speaks really, really loud. Now uh, you'll hear it in a second. I don't mean so. So first things first here, let's get the voice chat volume in the options <laughs> down down from 100. First things first. So we've got that drone set up on yellow stairs, which you didn't see in the prep phase because I didn't want to put the whole clip in because we haven't got all day. Um, but there is a drone on yellow stairs. I'm going to use it in a second, just get rid of the default there. We'll check the drone. We see the warden come out from behind the vending machine. So we know warden's at the top of those stairs. There's only really two angles you can hold at the top of those stairs. Um, there's like a, a lip of a wall that you can hide behind. I just hang on a second to see if he's going to peek again. We scan so we can't move. Easy as that. Now this has got absolutely nothing to do with Lion. I'm playing Warden. However, in the quick matches when I was trying to get the examples, I did this when I was on defense and I thought, you know what, I'm going to include it in the video. But this is that classic C4 spawn peek from Villa. We wait five seconds, launch the C4 down into the spawn. Get back in and blow it. <laughs> Nothing to do with the uh, lion, but I wanted it in there. So there we have it. That's lion. Not a super strong operator like I feel like I've been saying all the time, but a strong operator and when used correctly is really effective. So for those of you that don't know, I stream on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday at 8 p.m. UK time. There's been quite a few of you who've come over to the channel and I really appreciate it. So if anyone else wants to come over to the Twitch channel, go and say hello. Thank you. We've done Lion because there was a couple of requests for it in the last couple of videos. So as always, if there's someone that I haven't done yet that you want the operator doing, get it in the comments below and I'll add it to the list. But that wraps things up for today. As always, a massive thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.